Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Jackson, and I am here today to talk to you about book marketing. I know you just had an exciting experience writing your manuscript and now having the Planting People Growing Justice Press actually publish your book for you. And now you are thinking about ah, what do I do next? I have this fantastic work, but I need to be able to market it. I'm a three times published author. I've published three award-winning books. One is Christian fiction, one is women's fiction, and one is a young adult comic book that teaches young people how to start a business called Poppy Mix Cajun Popcorn Magic. I am also the founder of the Black Writers Workspace, which is an online community of over 14,000 Black writers and avid readers. And I am the founder of the directtoauthor.com, which is an online book marketplace where we allow independent authors to upload their books for free and we promote them one time for free. And we also offer a host of other uh, services so that we can help our independent authors soar. So you're wondering, oh, what do I have to do now? What's gonna happen to me now that I have this book and I'm so excited about it and I've told everybody in my family about my accomplishment and it is a huge accomplishment, but I wanna be able to sell my book. I wanna sell my book and I wanna make money. I understand that because I was in the same position with my work. I am self-published and I've also used the Vanity Publishing House, but I've also worked with hundreds of authors who published in many different ways. And we're all out here to do the same thing. Get our books into the hands of the reader. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So I'm gonna give you some tips on marketing. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to use social media. I'm gonna to talk to you about what is branding and what is public relations and what is marketing, because a lot of times we get those three things confused. And then I'm gonna make sure that you have all my information so that if you have any questions going forward, you can always, always ask me. But for now, let's stop, let's get a pen and paper out and let's get ready to learn about book marketing. You are now a published author. Let that soak in. You are a published author. You are joining millions of people out there who have published a book. And so the next thing you want to do is you want to be able to get that book in the hands of your readers, as well as be able to make money off of your book. And I want to say this, and we want to put a pin in this one. You can make money off of selling your books, but there are other ways to make money too, because now you have become, you've joined the class of authors and people are gonna be asking you to speak at events. They're gonna be asking you to sit on panels. They're gonna be asking you to share your resources with them. And so all of those things make you marketable far and beyond just the book itself. But for those of you who are very interested in making sure that you are effectively promoting your book, let's get started. My personal journey, and I want to start here because I want you to know I'm just like you, okay? I self-published my book or I vanity published my books, and I had to take those books through the entire process myself. Because when we say self-publish, what we mean is just that. You are now responsible for not only making sure that book is positioned, but it's also marketed professionally. And so that's what we want you to do. I have three books. My first book was published in 2010. An amazing opportunity for me. I knew nothing about publishing or marketing a book. And so doing this was a big learning experience for me. So I vanity published my book and the book, the website, the cover, everything was dynamic. Um, however, it was a lot of work. And so what I did, I reached out to other authors like you were doing now, listening to me, someone who's been there and done that. Um, and I tried to get advice from them. And what I learned was that a couple of things you wanna do. You wanna connect with the book clubs. As soon as your book is out and you know who your target audience is, then reach out to book clubs. You wanna do book fairs. You wanna have do speaking engagements. You want to um, activate your social media strategy. You wanna have a digital marketing strategy as well. And we're gonna talk about that. And then you wanna, if you can, put your books into some competitions, win those competitions, because that will also help to validate you. What is branding? Branding is the process of creating a distinct identity for a business in the mind of a target audience or, or consumers. Um, at the most basic level, branding encompasses uh, the company's logo, visual design, mission, and tone of voice. And you're thinking, 
does a book have all of that? The book is gonna have some of those things. Your personal brand may have all of those things. So I want you to understand that that's what your brand is. Your brand is the look and feel of your particular brand for yourself or for your book. Um, what's on the cover of your book? What colors are you using? Um, are you doing this under a, a header or a company of your own? If you do, do you have a logo for it? You don't have to have a logo for your book, but if by chance you are going in that direction, is there consistency? Let's talk about some brands. I just want to throw this out here because some people, when we talk about brands, uh, we get a little confused about what this is. Your brand is definitely your logo, your look, your tone, all those different things. And here are two that are very easily recognizable. McDonald's, this is the, the golden arches, right? We know this brand. This brand has been around for a very, very long time. You don't have to say McDonald's to know that this is McDonald's. All we need is the golden arches. Those arches have pretty much been the same um, over many years. And there's a reason for that. That consistency makes them easy to recognize. And so that's what you want to do as you build your brand, whether it's a personal brand or branding your book, you wanna be easily recognized. Um, and then we see the swoosh. What is what is the swoosh? What, what company is that? Anybody, anybody? Oh yeah, you know what this is. This is the Nike swoosh, right? Easy, you know what it is because this is a, a symbol that we've seen over and over and over again. They have a very consistent brand. I'm a huge fan of Terry McMillan, and she is a great example of how an author has been able to build a fantastic brand. Terry McMillan is someone who is has written many best-selling novels. She is a fiction writer and someone I've followed for many years, and she's a great example of how an author understands and appreciates her audience enough to engage with them using the tools that they have before them. Now, what she's doing is something that each and every one of you can do. And the key to that is to build a, is to have a brand voice that people can recognize to write good work, which is key to this whole process, but also to go out into social media and to engage with the people around you. Because the point of branding is so that people can build trust in you. We buy Nike because we really believe that Nike has one of the best tennis shoes and athletic gear out there. They sold us on that. We are convinced of it. And that's why we're spending hundreds of dollars on Nike gear because we trust them. We trust the brand. We trust everything that they put out before us. Now, we can argue the fact that they're one of the best, but nonetheless, they've done a fantastic job of making us believe that they are one of the best. And we have began to trust them because of that. So your, your goal here as an author is to get your audience to trust you, to believe that you are someone who's a subject matter expert, who is putting out a book that everyone needs to read because it's going to be the best in that genre and it's going to be something that you that they can trust from a reader's perspective but that you can use to educate them about the topic you're trying to educate them about so if you're writing nonfiction and you want to teach people about finances then you want to be perceived as a subject matter expert and you want to build a brand in that way so when i look at terry mcmillan what i love about her the reason why i'm using her as an example is because of her use of social media she is someone who's been successful for a very long time she didn't even have to create a social media um, uh, footprint if she didn't want to but she did because she knew that she needed to continue to engage, continue to be a part of her readers' lives. And so what she did, she goes out on Twitter, which is my favorite um, platform to connect with her and to see and to read her, her back and forth with her readers. I enjoy it because what she's done is she has become a very uh, empowered and comical and insightful person. She posts things that are controversial. She posts things that kind of make you think. She talks about politics. She talks about a host of different things because it allows her to remain real and tangible to her readers. So I put this up here, it says, people will buy you before they buy your book. And what that, mean is, what that means is that people need to trust you as a writer in order to buy your book. Okay, so using social media to do that is key. And so social media allows you to get a inexpensive way to get in front of potential readers. It allows you 
to engage with your readers on a day-to-day -day basis. It allows you to go live so they can see your face, they can see you reading your work, uh, they can understand your passions behind your work. Social media allows you to build a brand, but what you wanna do is to make sure that brand is consistent with the types of books that you're putting out there. So when we talk about book branding, we want to do a couple of things. We want to first identify our readers. And if you know who your reader is, then you know you're going to begin to define who they are, where they live, where they buy their books, what type of books they like, why they like those books, uh, what kind of income level do they have. It'll be great if you knew all of those things. But if you only knew a few of those demographics, you can put together a really great marketing strategy. However, in order to first get to that marketing strategy, we first have to start the process of building our brand. And so we want to know who our readers are. So if you can stop right now, take a second and start just write one or two lines on who's your reader. If your genre is children's books, who's buying those books? Is it the child or is it the parent? That's the question. Who's the audience for your book? Is it young adults? Is it middle grade? Are these high schoolers? And if there are high schoolers or young adults, are they buying books themselves? Where are they purchasing their books? What are they learning about their books? So I want you to start to think about who's your reader, because once you know who the reader is, then you're gonna know how to reach them. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna develop our brand voice, okay? Our tone, our voice. And when I say that, I say, when you're writing a children's book, then your tone should be happy, upbeat. You're using illustrations, maybe bears, other animals in your illustrations to talk about a specific topic, whether it's learning to be polite, whether it's learning how to share, whatever it is that you're using your book to do, you want to build a tone around your messaging. You know, if it's for little kids, you may want to have a soft and fun and frilly voice. If it's for older kids, you may want to speak the language of this generation. You know, if it's for adults, you know, maybe you're writing books for women who are uh, in do domestic violence situations. You want to create a tone around it. You want to be able to communicate them in a way, communicate with them in a way that they can understand. So developing your brand tone is important. Now, this is something that's going to come over time. So I don't want you to stress it, but I do want you to start thinking about, okay, if I develop this brand tone, where do I use it? Well, you're going to use it when you post on social media. You're going to have a very similar tone, a very similar attitude. If you're posting about a Christian fiction novel, then maybe you want to post about some um, Bible verses and talk about how those um, verses impacted you. Um, if you're posting about a children's book, you may want to talk about what inspired you to write the children's book. Is it your children and their experiences in life? If you're writing sci-fi and you want to talk about some outer world activities and build these amazing, beautiful characters, fantasy characters, fairies and, and, and witches and, and whomever you're using within your sci-fi or fantasy book, then you want to talk about those things when you're using social media. So we're building a brand and we're being consistent with that brand voice. Then you want to figure out your unique selling proposition or what makes your book similar to other great works. And you may go, that's kind of a odd thing. What's unique about your book? What makes it stand out from all the rest? Think about what's happening in the world today. Let's say you wrote a book about health, health care, how to take care of yourself. Well, we're just coming out of COVID. So if you connect that with, you know, how people are coping mental health issues or how people are coping post COVID from a health perspective, is that the unique selling proposition of your book is that you are talking about health care in a time when we are all concerned about health care? Are you talking about education in a, in a time when education is key to the world from different perspectives. So you're gonna really focus in on what makes your book unique. But another great way to sell a book is to know what makes your book familiar to other great works. Let's say you wrote a book and it's, a, it's about um, a character that reminds you, or two characters that remind you of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. 
And so when people ask you about your book, you say, I have the 21st century Romeo and Juliet story. Those are the types of things that you can do to help position your book, is to have an idea of how do you tell the story of your book and make it relatable to your readers without having to go into a deep dive of what the book is about. You're building your brand. That's how you build your brand. You wanna make sure that is a consistent message and you wanna make sure it's something relatable and you wanna have a theme and a brand voice and you wanna know who your readers are. Next thing we wanna do is wanna know what you're branding, okay? Now this is for those of you out there who just finished your book and now you're like, I'm gonna help other people write a book. I am going to become a writing coach, a publisher. I see this all the time on the Black Writers Workspace. I love the excitement of our writers. Once you've done it, now you go, I want to now help other people do this, which is excellent. But I want you to be very clear that branding multiple things together, you're trying to sell a book, you're trying to be a publisher, a consultant, a coach, an editor, those things can sometimes confuse your audience. So make sure you know what you're branding. If you're branding your book, then that's what we focus on. If the book is, is a very clear topic, and you know that topic may be masculinity it may be uh, womanhood it may be how to raise your kids it may be uh, a fiction book a, a true crime novel it could be a number of different things be clear on what you're branding that is so key so that you don't confuse your audience i want you to choose a look you know now this is more about your own personal brand i think but i love it when sometimes i run across authors who will have a personal look that connects with their book in a way. I know someone who has this fantastic character on the cover of her book with a red uh, blazer on. And every time I see the author, she's in a red blazer. She is trying to connect her personal brand with her book brand for that consistency. You don't have to do it, but it could be really fine. And so just make sure that you have an idea that your, your product that you're trying to market is your book and so you're trying to position that book to get as much as many eyes on it so that you can get as many customers as many readers for that book and then i want you to apply that brand everywhere and what i mean by that is it should look the same on your website as it looks like on your social media pages it needs to always be consistent if you can make it consistent do so now you may be saying well i've got multiple books and they're all in different genres and i understand that but you definitely want to have kind of a look and a feel and a brand and a voice for each one of those books, if possible, or create a brand for yourself that encompasses all of those. Now let's talk about my must have branding tools and what is so important about this, this, this slide, in my opinion, is that these are the branding tools that are a necessity for you to be successful. Now we've talked about a lot of things we've talked about your tone your voice your, your your color scheme your layout we've talked about connecting and engaging we've talked about all those things but now let's look at some of the core tools these are basic tools that i want everyone who's watching to have one a professional headshot i'm gonna let the silence take over a professional headshot is not a headshot with your cell phone your cell phone can take fantastic pictures that you can use on social media and beyond. However, a professional headshot is gonna give you enough resolution, high resolution, so that if you send that picture to someone, you send it to the newspaper, you send it to the church who wants to put it in the bulletin, you send it to um, someone who wants you on their podcast, that no matter how big they stretch that picture, you're, gonna, you're not gonna lose as much resolution because it's a high quality picture. So I want everyone to invest in a professional headshot, okay? Secondly, I want you to write an author's bio, short and long version, so that you don't have to do this at short notice, that you will already have your bio ready to go when someone asks. The short bio needs to be about your work. The long bio needs to be about your work. Now, why do I say that? because I work with a lot of authors and I say, send me a bio and they send me a resume of the job they've worked at for 20 years. And then the writing piece is one line at the very bottom. That is not an author's bio. Your author's bio is gonna tell me about your writing, your writing experience, uh, awards you've, you've actually 
received. It's going to tell me that you you blog. It's going to tell me that you wrote articles for a newspaper. That is what the author's bio is. So having one written, short and long version, makes it very easy when someone like me call you and say, hey, I want you on my podcast, but I need you to send me a headshot and a bio. You already have it ready. Secondly, I want you to create your social media presence, your online presence. And I also want you to have just a digital footprint in general. What that is, is a website. I do recommend that everyone create a website or at least a landing page. And if you don't want to do those to create a social media page that you keep up to date, it can be a Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram. I think you should use as many as possible that will help you reach your audience. So knowing your audience is key. If you're working with kids, you may want to be on TikTok. If you're working with business people, you want to be on LinkedIn. So I want you to have an online presence. That is key. And I want you to have some name consistency. What that means is that your website, for instance, my website is authormicheldjackson.com. My Facebook page is Author Michelle D. Jackson. You know, you see, you see the consistency there. We want to make sure that when I'm looking for you on Google, I can find you. But if your website is Arthur Michelle D. Jackson and your TikTok is um, Little Lady, you know, Bow Wow, and then your <laughs> your Twitter account is Bow Wow Love, and then your Instagram account is Author Me My Mo, I can't find you. And for someone like me, who's always looking up authors, I want to be able to locate you. So be consistent in your names, as well as make sure that you have consistency with your, um, your social media pages. I want you to create an email database. And this is going to be key when we start talking about email marketing. That database is going to be a critical piece of allowing you to stay connected with your audience people who have purchased your books in the past, people who may be interested in purchasing your books in the future. How do you build that email database? We'll talk about that later, but I definitely want you to write that down as I need to start building an email database. And the first thing you, I want you to do, pull out your Rolodex and start writing down the email addresses that you have so that you can start communicating with those people and say, hey, I'm gonna create an e-newsletter and I wanna add you. Is it okay? Okay, so let's we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. I want you to have a high-res book cover uh, graphic and this is so important because once again as someone who's always inviting people to participate in events I always say send me your book cover so that I can use it in a graphic to promote you and people will send me a really low res book cover or they'll hold the book cover up with their hand and take a picture of it and send that to me that is not what we're looking for you need whoever whoever designed your book cover should have it in high resolution and if they don't go back to them and say send me my book cover in high resolution as a jpeg or J, uh, png or vector file and this will allow you to be able to forward that to people like me and it's clear and it looks good and it makes you look professional finally i want you to have a well-written book synopsis Okay, that needs to be the thing that follows you everywhere you go. When someone asks you about your book, you send them that book synopsis. It should be on the back of your book. If you're writing fiction, nonfiction, or chapter books, you're going to have it on the back of your book, or it may be on your Amazon page, or it may be on your uh, website. Wherever it needs to be, it needs to be well written. So make sure that it's well edited. Now let's create a marketing strategy. And why is this important? Well, if you don't have a marketing strategy, you don't know how to allocate your funds for marketing your book. And you want to have a very good strategy, a very effective strategy um, to do so, though, so that you're not wasting money and you're not putting your money and time and energy and effort into something that's not going to produce sales. So your goal is to sell your book, right? Plain and simple. You want to get that book into the hands of as many 
readers, as many bookstores um, as possible so that you, the investment that you put into it to write that book, to share your story with the world, you, you don't feel that it's worthless, that it was val it was a process that did not provide any value to you. So you definitely want to sell your books. So we want to create a marketing strategy. Now you may think, I'm not a marketing person. I don't know anything about creating a strategy. I get it. I understand. However, once again, what did we do? We took off our creative hat and we put on our entrepreneur hat. And once you made that move, you have now agreed to do a number of things. One, you have to position your book, brand your book. You also have to market your book. You have to sell your book. You have to sell yourself. And you have to continue this process for as long as possible so that you can have continual book sales. So we're going to create a marketing strategy. And what I want you to do is to ask yourself a few questions. So get out your pen and paper and I want you to start asking yourself a few questions. One is, what is my book's overall message and theme? And we talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, what is that theme? It gives you that selling tool. It can also be kind of your tagline. I know for me, my first book was a Christian fiction novel. Um, I had a girlfriend who read my book and she said, this book is about money can't buy you love. <sighs> That's it. Now, who wants to read a book about money can't buy you love, a Christian fiction um, novel? Well, Christians, okay? That's one of my target audiences. The book is called The Heart of a Man. A lot of men wanted to read that book because of the title. And we're talking about money and wealth and notoriety and how those things don't make you happy. A lot of people who are in that space, in that mindset want to read the book as well. So understanding your theme can also open you up to understanding who your target audience is. Secondly, I want you to know what is my book's genre. Now, a lot of people may think, oh, this is easy, it's fiction, it's nonfiction. No, I want you to dig a lot deeper. I want you to be able to tell me, is this, you know, um, true crime? Is it uh, romance? Is it uh, romance? fantasy, sci-fi. Um, I want you to tell me if this book is self-help. Um, is it a finance book? I want you to be able to break down that genre as finely as possible, filter it through so that when you upload your book to Amazon or Ingram Spark, um, or if you sell your book yourself, that you have a genre that is one that's not going to be um, saturated with other people in that particular genre. When you say that your book is fiction and that's it, general fiction, you're not competing with every other general fiction book out there. But if you say that my book is a true crime novel, now you have filtered that list down and you have fewer people to, com to com um, compete with. And so that's what I want you to do is to start thinking about your book's genre. So stop right now, take out a pen and paper, of course, I know you already have that, right? And then I want you to write down what your book's genre is. Then I want you to tell me who are my primary and secondary readers. This is key. This is this is what this is all about, okay? We cannot create a marketing strategy if we don't know who we're marketing to. So who are your readers, you know? Now, on average, 250 books are sold by self-published authors. I want you to digest that. 250 books are sold by self-published authors. That is on average. That is a very low number for those of you who spent years writing your books. So we want to do everything we can to go far beyond 250 because for most of us, at least 50 of those books are gonna be sold to friends and family who may or may not read them. Just being honest with you. They might just wanna support you, but they're not gonna actually read it. So 250 books, 50 of them possibly sold to friends and family, 200 sold to outside of that group. That is not a lot of books. We wanna be selling thousands of books, okay? So in order to do that, we need to know our primary and secondary audience. And in understanding that is about understanding your theme. What am I doing with this book? What is this book really about? Understanding your genre. That is also a key piece and knowing how to reach those secondary and primary readers. So I want you to think now, take a second, who are my primary and my secondary readers for my book? 
Then I want you to ask yourself, where are my readers located physically and digitally? And how do I reach them? And that's where social media comes in. If you're writing for young adults, they may be on TikTok. If you're writing for business business people, those people may be on LinkedIn. If you're writing fiction, you may want to do a really dynamic Facebook page. If you're writing in multiple genres, you may want to have all of those tools handy. And you want to make sure that you can reach your reader. So we haven't even talked about bookstores. You know, we haven't talked about those outlets as well, but you definitely want to be able to reach your readers. Now, I also want you to be, to think outside the box, okay? Not just where do you reach these readers digitally, but let's say you have a book that speaks to women who are struggling in a domestic violence situation. Maybe you can call the local shelter and see if they would like to buy your books in bulk. If you have a book, a a nonfiction book about Christianity, maybe you want to contact the local church and see if they would like to buy the book in bulk. If you have a book that is, has an educational curriculum to to it, or something that can be used in the school system, calling the school system, calling after after school programs and seeing if they would buy your book in bulk. So I want you to start thinking broadly about this audience. Who are they and where do you reach them? That is key. Now with this marketing strategy, since we know who we're marketing to, we know how to reach them because we've answered these questions. We can define our audience. Now we're gonna talk about how much money we wanna put towards marketing our book. And this is such a big deal for a number of reasons. But one reason is that many of us are self-published and we don't have big marketing budgets. The benefit of going to a traditional publishing house is they they may put fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 towards your marketing of your book, which is very good. It's a huge amount of money and it can get you far. But for those of us who are doing it ourselves, our budgets may be... Eh, maybe $1,000 for the year or $500. We may be able to to push out $1,500 or $2,000, but you need to be clear about where that is and what you can do with that money. And that's why the strategy is key. The strategy itself is just identifying your audience and figuring out the correct tools that you need to use in order to reach your audience. So one of the marketing tools that I use is I suggest that you decide how many books you want to sell, okay? Let's say that number is 1,500 books. You're trying to push to sell 1,500 books. So at a minimum, I want you to dedicate at least $1 towards the marketing strategy for each book. So that's $1,500. This is just the rule of thumb, and this is very, very, very conservative. If you could do more, do more, because the more you could put towards marketing, the better your chances of reaching your audience. But if you know who your audience is, you know your genre, you know your theme, then how you use that money should be could be very strategic and there should be little waste. So if you have a children's book and you're trying to reach parents of kids 10 and under, you know those parents are on social media or you know those parents may be on TikTok and you can buy and boost ads on social media, for $5, $10, do so. That's a great way to stretch your budget. But you may find that there's a part of town in your city where you have a great deal of people who may wanna purchase your book and you may wanna buy a billboard. You may wanna get on the radio. You may wanna just do public relations and we're gonna talk a little bit about that where you do some press releases. There are a number of things to do to help market your book, but the key is being realistic about the budget that you have and understanding how far that budget can go because fifteen hundred dollars on boosting ads on facebook can take you far but fifteen hundred dollars if you're trying to buy a billboard or tv ads or radio ads is not going to take you as far as you may think because those are different tools that are very expensive so think about that so i want you to we're going to start talking about some of the marketing tools and that is a key part to making sure that you are effectively marketing your book. Everyone, this is one of my favorite slides to talk about because now we're talking about the actual marketing tools. 
So we haven't mentioned this before, but I want to bring up the difference between marketing and PR because I sometimes think there's a bit of confusion between the two. Marketing is the idea of paying someone to promote your product. That's what marketing is. It is paid promotion of a product. PR, public relations, or even if you're working with a publicist, is about an organic engagement. So your goal is not to pay someone to market your book, but it is to actually engage and build a relationship with an organization, a media outlet, so that they will help market you or your book for you. Now, how does that work? Marketing is paid. So marketing is the idea of, I give you money, you promote me. Let's think about what happens if you actually do a radio spot. You give them money and they promote you. A TV spot, they build a commercial for you, you pay them money, right? A billboard, you pay them money, they put a billboard for you. The idea with marketing is you're gonna get a quick, fast result because you're gonna pay to get that quick exposure with an organization that already has a huge following. Now, PR is about building an organic relationship with someone. So your goal there with public relations is to write a press release to announce that there is a new book coming out by you. You're the dynamic author. You just wrote a book. We're going to write a press release. We're going to notify the media about this. You send that press release to the media, whether you do it yourself. If you know reporters, you can send it directly to the newsroom or you can put it on the wire, which may cost a few dollars to do that. And if the media deems that your press release is newsworthy, then they will call you up and say, hey, we would love to have you come on the morning show or hey, we would love to do a full article on you. Or they may just publish or print your press release as is. Now, the benefit to PR is the fact that when you do public relations, it is an engagement. It is building a long-term relationship, hopefully, with a media outlet. And whereas if you were to go to a TV station and want to buy a 60-second spot, and that spot may cost you $1,500, if by chance you were to use a press release to get some time on the morning show and you're on that show for five minutes, where's the bigger value? $1,500 for a 60 second commercial that gets you in front of millions of people or no money that you spend, or let's say 250 you've spent to write a press release and put it out there. And you've got five minutes on the morning show, which is going to get you in front of 10 million people. So this is what is so different about marketing and PR. And I want you to understand those two. Marketing is paid, PR is unpaid and organic engagement because that's going to help you in de de determining how to use your strategy. So let's look at these tools here. We have print, broadcast, radio, TV, outdoor ads, and direct mail. These are all tools you can use to promote your book. You can put your book, you can create an ad and put it in the newspaper. Um, you can have your TV station, radio station to do um, some spots for you uh, during their peak hours. Those are going to be costly, but nonetheless can be very effective. Your outdoor ads are going to be your billboards, your bus wraps, your bus shuttle um, wraps. Those are great places to put information on about your book. So don't sleep on those opportunities, but they can also be very costly. Now, a lot of people don't like direct mail. I personally do because I can go to Vistaprint, which is a great resource, and I can have them to print up postcards about the launch of my new book and I can send it out to everyone that I know. So direct mail is also a great tool to use. Another marketing tool, of course, is your speaking engagements and your book fairs and other events. Speaking engagements are awesome for a new writer because a speaking engagement will put you in front of hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. And because of live streaming, I mean, one speech in front of 10 people could actually go out to a million people if by chance you can get in front of the right audience. So the goal here with these speaking events is another great way so that you can become a subject matter expert or be seen as a subject matter expert to your readers. So let's say you're writing a book about finance and you're able to be a keynote speaker at a conference that's focused on finance. Now you give your fantastic speech, which is a part of building your brand. And then at the end you say, and I have a book that I just wrote and I've got a table right here and you can come by and get a signed copy. Speaking events are excellent for promoting 
your book. So if you are someone who's comfortable with that, meaning your comfort level allows you to do those types of things and it's not going to create anxiety or frustration or, or heartache or heartburn to do it, go for it. Every time you can speak, because every time I speak, I sell books. Every time I speak, I sell books. So speaking engagements are very, very beneficial. And what's great is most of the time you don't have to pay to speak. A lot of organizations will pay you to speak. So now you're making money as the speaker and then you're making money on your book sales. So there's a lot of benefits to that, as well as the fact that now you are looked at as a subject matter expert. Book fairs. Oh, we love book fairs. I actually hosted the first Black Writers Workspace book fair here in New Orleans in January, and we're going to do it again in May. So stay connected with me if you want to be a part of that. I love book fairs. Great opportunity to get in front of hundreds of people who come to buy books, meaning you don't have to convert them. They're coming to the event to buy books. And so setting up and having a professional display not just a bare table with a few books on it, but actually a tablecloth, some professional dis a, di a display that you had created. And you can do that through many organizations who can create those types of customized um, exhibit display booths for you. Um, or you can do it yourself, but something that's very nice and appealing, you can really, really build your fan base. Even if people don't buy your book at a book fair, giving them a business card or a flyer or a bookmark with your information on it, you can begin to build a long-term fan base. And that is important. So there are tons of book fairs out there. Definitely get involved with them. Public relations and publishers. We talked about this shortly. The public relations role, the public relations professional's role is to use an organic engagement tool, meaning communicating, building relationships, sending press releases, um, sending emails, and trying to get you uh, in front of the media. So the media will know who you are, what you're doing, what you're writing about, and if it is newsworthy, and I have to say if, because everything is not newsworthy to them, then they will ask you to come on the show. Now, this is where branding is key because of a number of things. First and foremost, if you build your brand well and you connect it to something relevant that's happening that is important to the media, then your press release is going to be put a little bit farther towards the top when they're looking for people to bring in to talk about a specific topic. For example, we're in a political environment now. Let's say, you know, we are, you wrote a book that talks about politics, okay? And the topics that you're focusing in on is blight in marginalized communities, okay? And in your city, this is a major issue. So you write a book about it, you researched it, you've edited it, it's a well done book. It is well researched, like I said, it is something that the media can look at and say, oh, this person is a subject matter expert, we need to have them on the show. So you go out, you send a press release, you connect it with what's happening in the city, you talk about what you learned in that press release, and you send that off to your local media outlets, radio, TV, uh, newspapers, and now they began to come to you to say, hey, this is a major topic, blight in, in urban communities or blight in marginalized communities, we would love to bring you on to talk about this topic. Now, does that happen all the time, everybody, all the time? Think about if you watch Fox News, CNN, or MSNBC, a lot of the people they bring on are writers. They're authors. They've written books. They're talking about topics that the media wants to talk about. They're talking about Ukraine. They're talking about healthcare. They're talking about all these different issues. It's relevant to them. And who better to bring on than an author? Because you've re researched your material. And that is the case for everything, whether you're writing children's books, young adults' books, if those topics can connect with something that's happening in your local or regional environment and you can put out a put out a dynamic press release and get that to the media there is a great probability that you will be looked at as a subject matter expert and allowed to come in and speak on those topics and who would not want to be on cnn talking about a topic that relates to their book think about that so these are things that you can do now Marketing is something that's going to be a fast hit. 
Okay. Meaning that you're going to put money into your marketing strategy and into that media outlet and hopefully get a quick response. PR is engagement. It's going to take time. So I don't want you to approach your PR or your publicist with the attitude that in two days you need to have me in front of a million people. That's when you turn to marketing. That's when you say, I'm going to buy a, a run on the radio station. These tools, public relations and, and, pub, and PR and pub, being a publicist takes time. So just know that if you're looking for a fast, quick, I need to sell a hundred books, go the marketing route, buy some ads. If you're looking for building a long-term relationship with the media, getting in front of them and utilizing them to help promote you, that's going to take more time. Um, influencer marketing. Oh, love this. This is where we're using people out in the social uh, world, social media world, who have already established their followers. And so they may have 25,000 followers, 50,000 followers, 100,000, a million followers, and they are trusted, okay? Because like we said with the brand, it's all about being trustworthy. So these influencers have a following and these people trust them. So when they say, go read Michelle Jackson's new book, guess what's gonna happen? People are gonna go read it, right? Because that's the way we are. Someone I trust told me to do something, I'm gonna go and do it. That's how we operate. We believe in our tribe. We follow the leaders of our tribe. If the tribe leader in my world say, hey, you should buy this blue dress and I'm gonna be thinking, maybe I should buy the blue dress. It happens, okay? Many of us are leaders, some of us are followers. That's the way life is. And so these influencers have a very big impact when it comes to moving products. And that's why a lot of large, Corporations are now hiring influencers to push their products online because of the trust factor. So as a new entrepreneur, a business owner, someone who's pushing a product, which is your book, it's time for you to start thinking about who do you know is a social media influencer, someone who you can pay to start pushing your book or someone who you can inspire to push your book. Either one of those will work. And I want you to start looking at your um, readers people who are avid readers who are on social media always talking about books and there are many many of them you can use book talk or um look into some of your reader communities on instagram or TikTok um, or facebook and facebook has a host of uh book clubs online book clubs with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in them so join those clubs i mean those pages those groups and start posting your book out there. But also look for influencers, people who you can contact and say, what, what is the fee to get you to promote my book? And they'll tell you 300, 400, some people want $1,500, some people want more. And what they'll do is they'll go out and they'll say, hey, buy this book, buy this book. So we offer something similar with directorauthor.com. Uh, we're not, we don't consider ourselves influencers, but we do have a huge following between Black Writers Workspace and Direct to Author. And so that is something that is one of the services that we offer as well to get your book in front of thousands, thousands of readers. So don't hesitate to tap into those book influencers out there. And then we have social media, website and email marketing. We're going to go deep into social media and email marketing because these are the two tools that I think are just readily available for you. You can start using them now. You can start using social media and email marketing now. And so that is something I really want all of you to do is to start thinking about how do you build a footprint a digital footprint on social media and how do you build that database so you can start communicating with your fans on um, using email marketing. Now everybody, we're going to talk about social media and I, I wanted to stop, let you see my face a little bit better so that I can impactfully, hopefully influence you to pay close attention to our talk about social media because social media is an inexpensive tool to help you market your book, but it has to be done right. You have to build content. You have to post regularly. You have to know your brand and you have to know where your readers are. So we are going to talk about just that, social media and the importance of it. 
And I do hope that I can encourage each and every one of you to go out there and to build a footprint on social media so that you can use the tool in order to push your book and hopefully make sales. Marketing has changed and people aren't just marketing on TV and radio, which is very expensive. They are now marketing on social media. And now in 2023, we see this. If you wanna push your book, a great way to do it is to, to create a very effective and impactful and appealing social media presence. So for those of you who say, I don't do social media, I want you to change your mind. Simple. I want you to change your mind. You need to do social media. Now, how do we do social media? First, we have our brand, right? We have our brand voice, right? We know who our readers are, so we know where to reach them, right? Or do we know where to reach them? Well, we think we know where to reach them, but do we know where to reach them online? And so that's the questions you're gonna ask yourself. You're gonna build your audience profile. Who's in that audience? That audience profile is gonna be your target audience, your primary and your secondary. And you can look at your paper right now and tell me who that is. You can, you can tell me now, okay, gotcha. You know who your audience is, okay? Then you wanna craft messages that are consistent and that are in line with you informing and educating people about your book. Now, what is social media more than just a great global communications tool? It allows you to engage and interact with people all over the world. But the question is, what is the type of content that your readers want to know about? And a lot of that has to do with your brand, your book. So you write books about fiction. You write fiction, true crime novels. What do people who are following you want to know about true crime? What is it that's going to keep them engaged in what you're doing? What is the visual they want to see? How do they want to feel about interacting with you on social media? These are the questions you want to ask yourself. And I want you to build your, your brand and your content around that. Okay, so once you you know your audience profile, you set a message, you know somewhat of a message, a message you want to give, then you want to select the right social media outlet, and then you want to post. It's just that simple. So let's talk a little bit about where your people are. Now, this is something that I think is very interesting because it really allows you to see where your audience may be on social media. Now, this was done in 2021. And what it shows you is the number of users that each one of these social media outlets have. So for those of you who say, I don't do social media, let me tell you something. There are 2.7 billion users of Facebook. So no matter how much you may not like Facebook, there's a huge probability that your audience is there. Instagram, 1 billion users. Twitter, 1.187 million users. LinkedIn, 738 million users. TikTok, 100 million users. YouTube, 2 billion users. So if you just wrote a book, I don't care how you published it, if you're not on social media, you are missing an opportunity to get in front of billions of users. Some of the cool things that you can do to get your readers engaged on social media. Here we go. Run a Q&A question. People love to be engaged. Talk to them on Facebook and social media. Post something like, what was the last book you read? And just let them fill in the comment area with their books. They want to communicate with you. They want to connect with you. And what will this do for you? A Q&A like that will show you the types of books that they like. You know, and so that is always good. Like I said, data is king. You can create a poll or ask readers uh, for their opinion. Tell me about your, your, what character in the book do you love the most and why? Get to know them, connect with them, engage with them. That's what they want you to do. Go live or create a reel to discuss your writing. People love that. People love that. Go live. If you are comfortable, if that's your comfort level, Go live once a week or once a month, you know, just go live and talk to the people. Don't worry about if it's perfect, if your hair is perfect, if everything looks excellent, 
What I want you to do is just to focus in on engaging with them because going live and creating re reels are a great way to get instant responses from people. So do that, talk about your writing and it doesn't have to be long. It literally can be 20 seconds about your work. Show them your workspace. Talk to them about what inspired the character. Just engage because that's what this tool, that's what social media allows you to do. Post cover reveals. I love that. For those of you who are being doing these baby reveals, do a cover reveal. Once again, great way to engage your audience. Show props from the scene in your book. If you have a, 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 a crime thriller and there was a knife that was used by your main character, you know, take a picture of a knife and tell a story about it. Pull it from your work. Engage. Get them interested in the book. That's a just a fun way of doing things. Share virtual event schedules. Let them know where you're going to be, where I'm speaking, where you're going to be, the book fairs. You can do all of this on your own and you can build this content yourself. We're not going to talk about how to build content doing this marketing piece, but trust me, there are great ways you can create your own content, whether you're using Canva or Adobe Spark or all the other um, tools out there. You can take a template, pop your picture in it, let people know where you're going to be. I do something I'm going to show you in a minute. I just let people know, hey, I'm going to be at the Mississippi Book Fair. I'm going to be in Louisiana Book Fair. I always let my audience know where I'm going. Um, provide a behind the scenes look at your writing process. And we talked about that. Show your writing area. If you have a, 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 a chair, a table at your house, or if you like to sit in the backyard, show it to them tell stories, engage with your audience, show off your workspace. Same thing. You want to show them where, where you're working, where your mind is ticking, where the work is coming from. If you're, if you have a muse, show off that muse, just get them connected with you. Share a quote from uh, one of your books. Just continue to engage, engage, engage. And as you see over in the corner, you have some ideas that I pulled off social media. How many genres do you read? These are just, just, you know, polls from off of Twitter, um, or a Facebook and you just get people to respond. It's just your way of engaging with them. And then at the bottom, I love this, uh, my Sloan Monroe mystery series. And these are some of the, the items from the book. And so you can tell little stories about them. Here is an idea of some of the things that I do. Um, some of the graphics that I do. These are my Facebook posts. I have a page author Michelle D Jackson. And, you know, I do a lot on my page because I have a online community. And so a lot of my posts are about my community work, but I do post my page. I post where I'm going, where they can find me. Um, I take pictures with other writers. I try to be as in the community as possible. And these things have been extremely helpful. I've been interviewed by multiple magazines and newspapers. I've been on TV, I've hosted events. Um, my books are now being taught in um, two schools, two junior colleges in Florida. And all of this is really because of social media. I'm going to be completely honest with you. A lot of my success with my books is about social media. And so, you know, I've been able to take my work from just writing books and selling books and making money from it to making money doing other things like, you know, doing. Um, speaking engagements, I've done book fairs, I've done competitions, I've been able to monetize my book in a number of different ways. And so when you write your book, people see you as a subject matter expert, use that, use that, build your brand around it. There's a lot you can do with that title of subject matter expert, whether you're writing fiction, nonfiction, children's books, whatever you're writing. But the key is you've got to get out there. You've got to figure out what your comfort level is and you need to go out and people need to see your face if you write a book and you go hide you're not going to sell your book it doesn't matter how it's published it doesn't matter how much money is put towards the marketing you need to be the face you need to be the brand look at my shirt here in the middle this is a shirt that i created called self-published self-inspired self-empowered self-motivated you can't see the bottom of it but that is another way i've monetized what i do is i sell these self-published t-shirts and when you see me, you're going to see me in my t-shirt. Um, that's what I do. At this event, I'm at a book fair. This young lady here, I think she's nine years old. She just published, she's published two books. So she's dynamic. I love that. I love being around writers. And so I spend time doing that. This is my header. 
for my Facebook page. And once again, I'm showing off my books. This is who I am. I am an author. I put my author information there. So if they want to buy, they can go directly to my website. And this is a piece that I designed for all of my writing um, activities. If I go and I am at an event, I'm going to create a graphic. I'm going to put it just like this. I'll leave it here and then um, change out the name of the event. And I put this on my Facebook page. I put this on all of my social media pages so people will know they can always come and join me. So I started the Black Writers Workspace as just that, a space where writers of color can come together and talk about marketing and writing. And I invited 15 of my friends who I thought would be interested and who, who had either written a book or were in the process of writing a book. And I really thought it was just gonna be the 15 of us. But instead, what happened was um, over the next couple of months, because of the unfortunate murder of George Floyd and social injustice that was just in the mouths of everyone um, across the country, uh, and then COVID, it really took off. And so now we have over 14,000 um, people on the page and it has morphed into its own, on one level its own business, but also it has become a, a foundation or the foundation for a host of other activities. We have a, um, a, a oh gosh, we have so many things. <laughs> we have a podcast called the Black Writers Workspace. It's actually called Pen Posse. We have the Pen Posse Roundtable Discussion that we host every month. We have an annual uh, writers competition. We give out cash prizes. We have worked with a number of corporations who connect with me because they want to either provide resources to the people in the group or they want to host um, events or activities. We've had four virtual, no, we've had three virtual book fairs and one live book fair here in New Orleans in January. We had over 500 people come out with 75 writers to participate from all over the country. We're we'll gonna be doing that again next year. Um, I have been in multiple magazines. Um, I have been uh, asked to do, you know, from speaking on, uh, all because of a Facebook group. So the question is, how did I do it? I did it this way. I made this group a place where writers could talk about writing and get positive responses positive feedback, positive um, discussion and inspiration. That's how I did it. There's no, there was nothing else to it. Now, how I was able to use it to spur other initiatives that I've been able to monetize is this way. I use it to collect email addresses. Something that we talked about briefly was that when you create a Facebook group, and this is a private group, you can ask questions for people coming into the group. One of the questions is, would you like to share your email address to receive a newsletter? I've been able to collect well over 6,000 email addresses, and I've been able to create a weekly newsletter that goes out on behalf of Black Writers Workspace and DirectToAuthor.com, which is the bookstore that I develop online bookstore that I created as a result of the Black Writers Workspace. I take those email addresses and I stay connected with the people on the page. I invite them to my podcast. I invite them to events. I connect with them. I read their work. I buy their work. So when I created this community, it was not just, uh, I just wanted this to be something that people can go on and vent. I wanted this to be something where we can learn from each other. So I personally approve everyone going on the page and I approve every post on the page. So you may say, oh, I don't have time to do that. Yeah, I know. I have actually hired people to help me with this, but now I'm doing it myself. And I do this because if you get the wrong people on the page who are just going to vent and complain and be negative, then you lose what the page is really about, what the group is really about, which is helping people to move forward. That's all that I have, everyone. I thank you so much for being with me. I know you're gonna do fantastic work with promoting your book. I hope that you watch this video over and over again. I gave some really, I hopefully really good tips 
And if nothing else, I hope that you will continue to be a part of what you're doing um, with the press that you're working with now, Planning People, Growing Justice Press, and making sure that you are able to convert those followers to consumers, to long-term fans. I wish you good luck with your books and please don't ever hesitate to contact me. More than anything, we invite you to add your book to directtoauthor.com so that we can help promote you. Um, and we hope that you will look at our services to see if there's anything we can ever do to help you. In the future, you can always reach me at www.authormichelledjackson.com. Thank you.